How's it going everybody? Welcome to the video, Dylan Johnson here, and today I'm going to walk you through the steps to create a double exposure image like you just saw in the thumbnail of this video. Super easy, super simple, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it in just a few quick steps. So we're actually going to start off by jumping into Lightroom, we're going to go over what you need for this, and then we're going to jump straight into Photoshop, and I'm going to walk you guys through the few easy steps that we need in order to create a double exposure. Let's go. Okay, now as you can see in Lightroom, I've got a catalog here with a few images that I took of my wife in our studio. And the biggest thing that will make a double exposure easier to work with is having the proper base image or the image that you're going to be blending other images onto. So for this, we want to have some kind of silhouette image that doesn't have a lot going on in the background. That way it makes it easier to blend other images into that background and make it a lot more seamless. So for that, as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of different silhouette based images here. I've got a few highlighted that we'll be going over. I've already gone through and sorted through this catalog. But something I wanted to show you guys here, a little quick bonus tip, if you will, is I started off by taking an image of my wife holding up a gray card. Now this was to set the white balance in my camera before we started shooting all of these portraits. So something that's really cool is I can actually use this to properly adjust my white balance in Lightroom. So if I come up to the eyedropper tool or the white balance selector, you can also hit W on your keyboard. Then I'm just gonna hover over the gray card and I'm gonna select that. You'll notice that it changed and automatically adjusted my white balance to what it actually needed to be. So I don't need to go through and fine tune my adjustments. It went through, adjusted my Kelvin, and it adjusted the tint in this image to perfectly set the white balance, which is something that's super handy because if I had forgotten to change my white balance before I moved on to shooting all these portraits, then something that I could do is I could just control A to highlight all of them after selecting my white balance. And then I'm gonna come over to the sync button. And from here, I can just hit synchronize. And that's going to synchronize that white balance setting across every single image. So as long as I was shooting in the same lighting conditions, that white balance is gonna be perfectly set for every single image in this catalog. Again, that's something that's super nice, say if you're in a studio setting like I was, and if you didn't set your white balance correctly, you can go through, set them all at once, and it just makes life a whole lot easier. So if you come back down to the tray here, you'll notice I have an image highlighted. I've already gone through and sorted through these images to find the proper one, so we don't have to spend a whole lot of time going through that. But this was the one that I chose that I liked best out of all the images that we took. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna throw on one of my black and white presets. So this is a nice one for doing these double exposures because it's really flat. But if you look at my histogram, everything is properly exposed. I don't have to worry about any of my blacks clipping. I don't have any of my highlights clipping. It's just a nice, perfectly exposed image that'll be great and easy to blend. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're going to export our image and open it up in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to File, go down to Export, and that's gonna bring up this other window. Now here you can choose a specific folder to export to. I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. And then if you come down here, you wanna make sure you have your image format set to TIFF file. That's gonna give the highest resolution file to work with. And then bit depth is gonna be 16 bits, no compression, color space. Adobe RGB is gonna be best to work with for now. Say if you're exporting for Instagram, you wanna change this to sRGB. That's gonna be the best setting for viewing on computers and things like that. But the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna come all the way down to post-processing. Now what we want is we're gonna change this from do nothing to open in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. This is the current version at the time of making this video, so that's what it's gonna open up. So from here, we could hit export. I've already done this, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And then it's gonna automatically export that image and open it up in Photoshop ready for us to edit. So now that we've got Photoshop open and we've got our image imported, we need to go and find our second image that we're gonna be blending into this to create the double exposure. So what I've done is I've gone through my old images and I found an image from my previous trip to Amsterdam last year that we can use to blend in to create our double exposure. So I've imported that into Photoshop here. It's already been edited. This is something that I've done quite a while ago. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to select this layer. We're gonna hit Control C to copy it. We're gonna come back into our base image. We're gonna hit Control V and that's gonna paste it as a new layer into our image. Then we can come up here, 
and just close out our other one. No, we don't need to save, and there we go. So now actually what I wanna do is I want to rotate and flip this image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control T on my keyboard. That's going to open up the transformation tool. And then I can actually right click this guy and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then I'm going to flip it vertically. There we go. This part is all based on how you wanna blend the images together. This is how I'm gonna work with today's image. So from here, I'm gonna drag it into roughly the position that I want, which will be somewhere around here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come back over here and I'm gonna bring my opacity down to around 50%-ish, somewhere around there. Just so I can better see the base image that we're gonna be working off of underneath this layer. So from here, I'm gonna get it kind of in place that I want, rotate it manually a little bit, get it lined up, maybe scale it up just a touch, something like that. And then what I'm actually gonna do is right click and I'm gonna hit warp. And what this is gonna let me do is drag these points individually so I can better shape this image to my main image. And then once you're finished with those changes, all you're gonna do is you're gonna hit enter on your keyboard. It's gonna compile all that, and it's going to finish and make sure that those modifications actually stick. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this layer and convert it into a black and white image. So I'm gonna come up to image, down to adjustments, and then convert black and white, or just black and white here. That's gonna convert it to black and white. If you want to, you can play around with all these settings to adjust how the image looks, but I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. I'm just gonna hit okay. And here we go, on to the next step. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask on this layer. So if you come down to this little white box with a circle inside of it, hit that, it's gonna add a mask next to this image. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna blend these two images together using this mask. So I'm gonna be using my Wacom Intuos 4 Pro tablet in order to do this today. If you guys don't have a tablet, don't worry about it. The nice thing about this is that it's pressure sensitive. So based on how much pressure I use on my strokes, I can get a thicker or finer line in my blending process. So it makes things a little bit easier to do. However, you can achieve the same effect using a mouse. So don't worry if you don't have a tablet like this. So if you guys haven't worked with masks before, the way they work work is they start out white and then as you paint in black everything that's black is going to actually be see-through so if I come in here I increase my brush size a little bit and I just start painting black onto this mask you'll notice that everywhere that I paint basically allows that lower layer to be visible through that mask so I'm just gonna control Z undo those changes and we're gonna go through and just start slowly blending these images together so the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of those hard harsh edges so I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna slowly start painting those away just to get rid of those and really just kind of blend everything together there we go so actually another thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off the tablet sensitivity so that I can really eliminate these edges to start. I'm just kind of start shaping this blend, get it going exactly how we want. There we go. Yeah. And again, just really focusing on eliminating some of these distracting points and these hard edges. There. So already that looks pretty damn good. I mean, if you guys look at that, it looks like the building is just sprouting right into the image. Might be a little bit iffy here on top of her head here. Got it kind of going into the hair. But if I turn on my tablet sensitivity again, maybe take my flow down a little bit, decrease my hardness all the way, take my flow down to around like 50%, 40%, something like that. Then what I can do is I can just lightly brush in some more of this mask and just kind of really shape how it's blending into the image below. So this is a great technique that you can use in almost anything in order to blend two images together. Just like that. So now if I want, what I could actually do is I'm going to control T and I'm actually gonna scale this up a little bit more. And again, just continue to slowly and carefully start working this mask into the image. 
opacity. Let's bring that down a little bit. I want to just really shape it around her face. Especially around her hair and her eyes. I don't want it to see through her eye at all. So I'm going to turn this off again. Bring my brush size down just a little bit. And really make sure that it's not showing through her eye at all. Turn that off. There we go. Again, you can use these layer masks to really just shape the images and shape the blending however you want. This is a real artistic process here. Say I went too far with my mask, I painted it out a little bit too much, like right around here. I'm gonna switch my brush back over to white. I can just hit X on my keyboard to toggle back and forth between my palettes. And then we're just gonna paint in some white. So you can see here, I can paint those clouds back in. Maybe I like it the way it is there. Or say if I wanna paint like right along her chin here, really paint that in. Again, shape it however I want. Maybe bring under her eye a little bit. Hit X just to switch back. Just start getting rid of these hard edges that I brought back a little bit. So now that we've got our images blended together, the last thing I like to do is make some fine-tuned adjustments to my contrast, especially in a black and white image. I want it to have a little bit more of a punch. The reason I made it flat to start with was so that it blended a little bit better, but I want to kind of fine-tune that now that we're finished with the blending process. So I'm gonna come to my keyboard, hit Control, Shift, Alt, and E, and that's gonna create a merged layer of all my current layers on top of all the other layers. From there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to Image and come down to just Auto Tone. That's a quick way to kind of add a little bit of a punch to a black and white image. As you can see here, we've got quite a bit of punch going on, but I actually don't want it to be quite that severe. So I'm just gonna come over to my Opacity tab and just start bringing the opacity down just a little bit, maybe say around like 75%, 70% somewhere around there. Let's just go 70% because OCD purposes. And there you go. So now you can see without that versus with it, it just gives it a little bit extra punch, a little more contrast, a little bit more depth, and just kind of ties the whole image together pretty well. So there you go, guys. Super quick, super simple. You can create some really interesting and really unique images this way in just a few easy steps. The biggest thing to remember with this is your base image. You want to start with something that has very little to no background, like a studio portrait, some kind of silhouette, other things like that, and then work from there. That'll allow you to blend multiple images together very easily without having to worry about blending over a background, any kind of busy thing like that. Keep your base image as simple as possible and you'll be good to go. So there you go guys. I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys have taken something away. As always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos like this all the time. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.